In this video, we're going to see how to use a data list element in HTML to offer a user a predefined list of possible values for an input field. Now we want to do this because we know that it's good practice to minimize the amount of typing that a user has to do. I recall back in the early days of user interface, it was common to just offer a whole bunch of text fields or text inputs where the user had free control to type whatever he or she wanted. The trick is twofold. Number one, if you want to express something like pounds, users might have many different ways to express that. Maybe spell out the word pounds, use the abbreviation LB, or use a hash symbol, among many other options. It's inconsistent, and inconsistent data is hard to manage. Number two, it takes a long time to type all of that. So when we have a dropdown, we want to consider what kind of autocomplete options we have. We see by default it will look at things that we've typed previously, but we might want to give a predefined list. In future videos, we'll also take a look at jQuery Autocomplete, which will filter the list as the user's typing. But the focus of this video is specifically the data list and option HTML elements. So the page I just showed you, we have a little search bar up here, and we're going to take a look at the source under the covers. Now in its current form, you might see some extra attributes here that you may or may not recognize, and that's because this page is using HTML and Bootstrap library, and also it's using Timeleaf because it's part of, part of a Spring Boot application. But nonetheless, you mainly see HTML tags. If there's some attributes you don't recognize, don't worry too much about it. So we take a look at this input attribute or input element here. You notice it has class, type, placeholder, area label, and name. There's one other attribute that we can give it called list. So let's say list equals, and then we'll say plant underscore search, something like that. The reason why we want to add this list attribute is it allows us to associate this input with a data list. So we say data list, all one word, and then we say ID equals, and then double quote, oops, and then ID equals, and then double quote, and we'll say plant underscore search. So the ID of the data list has to match the value in the input list that we're trying to associate together. So in other words, the input is what the user will type in. The data list the user won't see directly, but will see as an autocomplete essentially, or as a series of possible options for this input. So data list, let's do a separate open and close tag. And inside of this, let's say option value equals, and then we'll say oak, and then we'll go ahead and terminate and we'll give that a closing tag as well. So option just like so. Let me copy and so we can quickly put together a few different variations here. We'll do oak and we'll do maple and then maybe pine and maybe spruce. We could keep going on and on and on. Uh, let me add one more. We'll say oak leaf hydrangea, which isn't truly an oak. It's just a plant with flower with uh, leaves that look like an oak. So we'll save and we'll stop and we will go ahead and restart and see what this looks like. And the application is started now. Let's go ahead and refresh this page. And now when I type here, take a look. You notice that in Chrome, it gives us a little drop down arrow here. And it gives us all of these choices that we had before. It also gave us some choices that we typed in earlier. But oak, maple, pine, spruce, and oak leaf hydrangea, notice that it gives us those, type, uh, those options that we put into the data list. If I start typing oak, Notice that it will autocomplete that we do need to uh, click down and select the appropriate oak. So if I start typing maple, notice it will also do a little autocomplete, although I do have to tab down and I have to select that item. We type in uh, P for pine and you notice it gives us maple which has a P, pine which has a P, and spruce which has a P. Also pawpaw which I entered previously, but it doesn't give us oak or oak leaf hydrangea because neither of those have a P. So this is an easy way to implement an autocomplete uh, dropdown. Um, you can easily populate this. You see, I've just typed it in raw here. You can easily populate this using something like iteration, using something like time leaf by just plugging in an iteration variable in each of these. Although do, we do have to be careful that we don't put 
uh, too many in here because the drop down needs to be something that's manageable. If we have 3,000 different options, the user won't be able to see all of those options. One other funny thing, you notice if I put a something else between the open and close option just like so. So in this case, I'm putting in some numbers. So the value stays the same, but we're just putting in some kind of text like a number between the open and close option tag. Let's see what happens when we deploy this. So save and let's restart one more time. The application's now restarted, so we'll refresh this page, and once again, I'm going to type, type in oak. Now take a look, do you see the numbers that I put between the open and close option tag? Those appear on the right. So I type in oak, and I pick oak, and it stays with oak. I type in oak, leave hydrangea, and let's go select that, and it, sure enough, it fills in oak, leave hydrangea. This is not necessarily consistent across browsers though. If I go to Internet Explorer and if I type in Oak, you notice that it just kind of shortcuts and tells me the number that's associated with Oak. If I type in Pine, notice it goes to three, which is the number that's associated with Pine. So a little different look and feel based on the number that you're using. Now I paused the video, I went ahead and took that number out and we'll see that we do indeed have a consistent look and feel if we don't have something between the open and close option tags. So in Internet Explorer, uh, you notice that I start with nothing. I type in O and it shows only those things with O. Uh, I type uh, M A and we get maple. So it'll do a little bit of autocomplete. We run over here to edge and we'll get a similar, I type in O A, we get oak. Uh, I type in P I and we get pine like so. So it does a bit of autocomplete. And Chrome as well, we'll do a research here, uh, refresh here. And once again, we'll start typing oak and it autocompletes to there and pine. One limitation of this data list is that sometimes we want a human readable uh, text that the user will see, and then some kind of number behind the scenes that will give us a primary key or some kind of lookup for that text, something we can run into the database. And this is what I was attempting to simulate with that number, but we see it kind of gives an inconsistent look and feel to the user, an unpredictable experience. So um, great if we just need to autocomplete something like a city name or something where we don't necessarily have an auto uh, a uh, primary key. Beyond that, we might want something that does a little bit more. So I'll tell you what, this is just an introduction into this concept. What we're going to look at in our next series of videos is how to use a jQuery autocomplete to do something like this, where I start typing in Eastern, and you notice that we have, in this case, we have 5,000 different autocomplete values here, and as we type, it filters down to only those things that have the word that I'm typing. And if you say, wait a minute, I don't say Eastern Redbud and Circus Canadensis. Well, that's simply because Circus Canadensis is the Latin name for Eastern Redbud. Uh, Juniperus virginiana is the Latin name for Eastern Red Cedar. So this is a true jQuery autocomplete that does not use the data list and option. Stay tuned in the next few videos. We'll look at several different ways to create a jQuery autocomplete like this. And we'll also see how we can show the user something human readable. But in the background, we can add a unique identifier number as well. So stay tuned. We'll have a few more videos to cover that. Thank you.